Hi, my name is Dr. Aimo Okon. I am an assistant professor of research at the Center for Molecular and Translational Medicine, Georgia State University in Atlanta, Georgia. My main research area is oncology, everything from lung cancer to ovarian, endometrial, and breast cancer. In recent years, I've actually moved my research that focuses more on metabolic disorders and the link with cancer. From research, we do know that cancer or malignant transformations do have metabolic alterations. And so, really, my goal is trying to understand the mechanisms and processes involved in driving cancer. What can we do by gaining a better understanding at the molecular level in order to help us to design patient precise specific treatments to help to cure this disease. Technology in today's life is playing a huge role and in healthcare is no different. Technology still emerging in cancer treatment and in cancer research is a huge deal. In addition to traditional diagnostic testing that goes in cancer detection, we're seeing that technology is now enabling high throughput automation. Technology is allowing us to run through multivariate analysis. Technology is now enabling us to actually go through computational modeling, which enables us to predict how a disease might play out or how a cancer might respond to a specific therapy. And so today we see that the power of technology is really playing a huge role in the way that we detect, diagnose and treat cancer. And so I think there's a huge role and potential for technology in cancer care and in cancer treatment, even though it's still evolving at a very alarming and fast pace. But that's the way to go in the 21st century. How African countries keep up with technology in cancer research? I think we're not there yet. A lot more could be done. I think um, depending on where, there's still a lack of the extent and the impact of cancer as it involves the wider population. We do see the increasing cancer rate in African countries now that wasn't there 10, 15, 20 years ago. And so we still don't understand what the drivers are. Is it a dietary issue or are they lifestyle issues? Or is it all simply down to genetics? So I think there's a lot more that needs to be done. African countries, when it comes to cancer, I think there might be a bit of denial, or I think maybe we're still overwhelmed with basic infectious diseases like malaria and tuberculosis. And so we're still not paying attention to a disease like cancer. I think there's a lot more that needs to be done. I think the awareness is coming on board now, and that's why an event like this, the Healthcare Innovation Summit in South Africa, it's very important and timely because I think the, the information needs to be out there in the public domain where people need to know and make informed choices and where governments also need to have an input in order to support the well-needed cancer research project in order to really bring a much-needed support to the wider population. What is cancer? You know, how, what is this death sentence, so to say? You know, um, most people, especially the wider public, don't really understand exactly what that term means. Cancer, from a layman's perspective, is a group of diseases. It is a difficult disease to tackle just for the fact that it has huge variations from person to person. From disease causative agents or factors, as well as response to therapy, it is almost difficult to predict the nature and how the disease might play out. And so all we can do is uh, prevention or intervention strategies. How can we really cut back the risk factors? Things like obesity would drive as a risk factor to cancer. 
certain lifestyle choices. You know, alcohol or smoking in excess could be a trigger. And so I think people need to be a bit more aware on how the lifestyle choices can really impact the cancerous factors. And for people who really do have a family history, which means there might be some genetic predisposition, for such people that have probably lost a mom, an aunt, an uncle, some relative to the disease, it would be important to spend a bit more time to have some regular checks. A cancer is a very insidious disease. It is a very dynamic and resilient disease. So people think, you know, it just sits there and say, hey, I am cancer, come get me. But no, cancer actually mingles with the normal cells. And so how do you find these corrupted cells and target them to get response? So the first thing would be preventative strategies. What can you do on a daily basis just to minimize the risk of getting the disease? And when it comes to um, diagnosis and treatment, then detection becomes key. How can we really find a way of detecting quite accurately and robustly this disease as early as possible? Because this is key and this is where you get the greatest chance of survival. When cancer is diagnosed at an early stage, there is as high as a 90% chance of cure. Late stage cancer, stage three, stage four, when the disease has spread, what we term metastasis. In other words, you've had the disease move to other secondary organs. It becomes a major issue to tackle. And so the key and the goal would be prevention. And then the next step would be early, accurate diagnosis. People need to become more aware. People don't need to be scared of cancer. It is not a death sentence. It can be managed. It can be prevented. We just need to pay a bit more attention of lifestyle choices and the things we need to do to minimize the risk of cancer. And so uh, my presentation here at the Healthcare Innovation Summit in Johannesburg, South Africa, I think to begin with, it is a timely and important meeting to have. I will be trying to bridge the gap on how technology is actually impacting cancer care and cancer research. I think it is important to understand that in order to deal and tackle a disease like cancer effectively, there needs to be collaboration across board. We need to have the engineers, we need to have the clinicians, we need to have the scientists, we need to have, you know, different and diverse skill set. Cancer is a very difficult and resilient disease to tackle. And so when you do have people from different expertise and skill set, we can now begin to put together the ideas and technologies that we need in order to address the disease and tackle it effectively. And so for me, really being here at this summit would be to try to connect how technology is actually impacting cancer diagnosis, cancer detection, and cancer treatment. Now we've moved on in addition to traditional cancer testing, diagnosis, and all of those sort of um, traditional methods. We've moved ahead to highly automated, robust, high throughput um, imaging system. This allows us to really see the disease in real time. We can see response to a particular treatment. And so we've moved on to ultrasound imaging. We've moved on to imaging at the molecular level. And so I think this really now empowers clinicians. This empowers the, the care and management team to see in real time if the patient is actually doing well in response to a specific therapy or if we actually need to change a treatment course. And so I think technology is actually playing a huge role in the way we see and deal with the disease. And so for me, being here at this summit is trying to really bridge this gap and try to really reach across to the audience with different skill set to try to connect in a wider perspective um, the disease we're actually dealing with and how technology is really impacting how we see and treat and address um, the disease. 
My name is Dr. Aimo Falcon. I am an assistant professor of research at the Center for Molecular and Translational Medicine at the Georgia State University, Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for the opportunity to be here to talk about my research and how technology is driving major changes in the way we see and treat cancer. There is hope out there. Cancer would be a thing of the past. Thank you.